Uh-oh, it's time to street bash with the brand new Arma Infraction version two. Rich here from the rcnetwork.com and today we are going to street bash with the brand new Arma Infraction version 2. Now if you haven't heard of the Infraction, this is actually the second version of it. Um, the original came out a little about a year ago or so with the Limitless and some other releases from Arma. Now this thing is huge. You can see there on the box, this box measures in like 36 inches in length, 14 tall, 12 deep. I mean the, the thing is just massive uh, when it arrived here and I've got to say super impressed. I've already had it out of the box. Uh, there's nothing inside of this thing right now. I've already taken a look at it and it is truly impressive. Now the biggest difference on this new infraction of Street Bash 6S BLX 1 7th scale. So this is a lot larger than your average 8 scale vehicle. 80 plus mile per hour but the biggest difference is this now has the handbrake feature right on your remote. Now the new infraction, the version two, comes in two different colorways. Of course, the bright blue that you saw in the beginning of this video. And right here is kind of like the stealth gray. This has a super cool surprise that I'll show you later in this video, but this is the one that I selected. I, I kind of like the stealth look of this version over that kind of bright blue color. Now, what I spoke about earlier, the version two includes a handbrake feature. It controls the third channel on the radio and basically takes a second servo that's included in this build. It actually creates like a handbrake effect and will send you kind of like into a drift or a skid a lot easier right out of the box. So simply flip the switch, it'll kick on kind of like a clutch plate or slipper clutch and you'll go into a skid a lot easier. Finally, on the back side of the box, it goes over all of the features and benefits of this brand new infraction. Of course, high speed blasting has all the aerodynamic, especially on the under tray right there. You do have the whole assembly right here for your motor, your center diff, and also that new handbrake feature with the included second servo. Other trickle down features right here are some of the gearing or the pinion gears going into the differentials, the safe D first is what they're calling it. Also incorporated in this build is all of the Spectrum Firma electronics. So kind of new to this, I haven't seen these in other Armas before. I don't get every Arma, but this one definitely has it. And finally, a look at the center portion of the chassis with that huge Huge brace going down the center. As with all my videos, I'll have a handy link down in the video description so you can check out the new Infraction version 2 for yourself. Before we get to the start of the show, let's go over some of the supplement items that come inside the box. Starting with a bag of plastic bits, including some body mounts, a whole bag of tools, including hex wrenches and cross wrenches, a 25 tooth speed pinion, stock is a 15, a speed chart that'll get you up to that claimed 80 plus mile per hour on the box, some Arma decals, an infraction and felony owner's manual that has all of the information that you'll need, and finally the DX3 remote from Spectrum. Now taking a look at the new Spectrum DX3 radio, I haven't seen this on an Arma vehicle before. Of course, this is a three channel remote that has that handbrake feature right near the trigger position. It has everything you'd expect in an RTR remote, including steering and throttle reversing, throttle limit, which is quite handy if you happen to hand this to a family member or a child, steering dual rate, brake rate, steering trim and throttle trim, a nice foam wheel up there on the top instead of the plastic that we saw in the previous versions. And finally, this does run on four AA batteries that you'll have to supply yourself. And finally, the Infraction version two. Now this thing is just cool overall and the size is what really makes this thing awesome. Being a 1.7 scale, it's quite a bit larger than in a 1.8 scale. You would think it would just be a little bit. It's quite a bit larger. But let's go ahead and compare it to a couple other vehicles I have here in studio. One car a lot of people can relate to is a 1.8 scale monster truggy. The Creighton EXB right here on the right, you can definitely see a difference. The TLR 22X4 110 scale four wheel drive buggy, very comical sitting next to the infraction and a 110 scale axial Wraith 1.9, still quite small compared to the infraction. 
Now, as far as styling on the infraction, this thing got a lot of its design cues from Ken Block's Huna truck. <laughs> There's no mistake in it. It was basically almost a replica of that truck. Of course, with all, all of the copyright infringements with some of the brands, but Arma did a great job of making this into an RC for us so we can all enjoy it. Now the body on this stealth gray version is super cool because it's mostly a flat design throughout. And they created that with, of course, painting it on both the inside and the outside, it looks like. Now there are some gloss effects and you kind of see that in the red scheme on the roof and slightly going onto the hood. But overall, I love the design of this thing and all of the different graphics. And the super surprise on the stealth gray version is the stars and stripes you see going across the hood and onto the roof. Super cool design. I definitely like that, especially, of course, here in the U.S. It has that nice patriotic feel. Other features on the body, of course, are Arma's famous lanyard body pins. I think every RC should have these things. It helps you to not lose your body pins, keeps them attached to the body right here, which is a nice feature. You do have a skid plate up here on the roof and you're thinking, why is there a skid plate on the roof? Well, when you bash a little bit harder than you should, you land on your roof and you go sliding for tens or hundreds of feet. Protects the body, keeps your body going a little bit longer than it should. Also a roll cage back here to protect one of the weakest portions on any truck body, which is this little section here between the cab and the bed. It's a direct 90 degree angle. And of course, uh, that is the weakest portion of it. So nice little addition here of this roll cage. Now looking at the front of the infraction, this thing sits super low to the ground. There's maybe five eighths of an inch right here between this front little valence here and the ground. Now this front valence right here, the black portion is actually hard plastic. Uh, the body sits on top of it. And I'll show you that feature a little bit later, but that is a super nice feature to have. The body just gets completely destroyed sometimes and having that hard plastic there is super nice. Finally, checking out the ass of the Arma infraction. God, I love saying that. You have the huge diffuser right here that's all built into the body. This isn't just an afterthought. The body was kind of designed after this diffuser right here. I love the infraction license plate and the abbreviation of it. Of course, the taillights are probably one of the nicest non-skill taillights that I've ever seen. This is a very nice creation from Arma. It just fits the body so well. And of course, you do have that clear Lexan wing on the back just to give you additional downforce on the rear. You can cut out sections of this if you're getting too much downforce, just to make a little less traction in the rear. Looking at the wheels and tires on the infraction, of course, 17 millimeter hexed wheels. These are eight skill buggy size, of course, and the famous D-Boots Hoons tires. These are the famous smoking tires that the infraction originally released on. Now these are super stiff. There's almost a feel of no foam in there. This is almost a solid rubber tire. Not sure if these are belted. I haven't looked into that yet, but nonetheless, a pretty cool feature on the infraction. Sitting on the backside here, you're seeing the underside of the chassis with that hard plastic front piece I was telling you about earlier, the front valence. Now you do have a front skid, a rear skid that kind of goes into that rear diffuser, and of course a super wide aluminum chassis with kind of channels in here just to kind of channel the air underneath and keep everything non-turbulent, which is a cool feature. Now, not checking out the original infraction, I didn't have an expectation of what to see on the inside of this body. Now, I was expecting to see basically like a larger Creighton underside. That's what I was expecting, but this thing is totally different. This is a completely different ground up design than I was expecting in the infraction. Now, of course, this is based on kind of like a touring car or GT style vehicle. So you do have a front bumper up here that's made from foam just to keep your body somewhat intact if you hit a curb or something. You have very small aluminum bodied shocks up here. These are maybe two and a half inches from eye to eye. So super small, but huge bore. They're probably a 17 millimeter shock. Now you do have a pivot ball suspension up here on the front, kind of like what we'd seen in the Creighton, Talion, those type of vehicles. So highly tunable on every aspect. Moving back, the most noticeable is this huge brace going from the front bulkhead to the rear bulkhead. Made from aluminum. This thing is ginormous, probably got a, a good 15 inches in 
diameter there. So a huge feature. There's other bits and pieces that are aluminum, like the top plate up here. I'm seeing a camber plate and other bits and pieces are that nice red anodized aluminum. Looking at the front also, you do have front CVD axles up front. So a very nice feature when you're turning. The overall layout of the infraction is very eight scale buggy-esque. You do of course have a front differential, a center differential, and a rear differential, all driving on drive shafts going down the center of the vehicle. Now we will cover the specs of the electronics, but I wanna show you the layout overall. It seems to be very well balanced. You have a very large motor here on the driver side of the vehicle. On the passenger, you do have the steering servo, the receiver box, and of course the large ESC. Now right behind that and right behind the center differential, also a very well balanced layout, you have two saddle pack trays for batteries. So you will have to run like two 2S or two 3S batteries. The plugs on the receiver accommodate for that. However, you can run a single battery as well, but you may have some out of balance issues. Looking at the rear of the vehicle, we are seeing a lot of the same features we saw in the front. However, there's a standard rear knuckle design over a pivot ball, which is a nice feature. You do have dog bones in the rear versus a CVD axle, and you do have a rear sway bar as well as a front sway bar I forgot to mention earlier. We're seeing a similar shock in the rear, much more laid down than the front, and a little bit wider shock tower in the rear just to accommodate that lay down feature. Looking more at the diffuser in the rear, you'll see a full bracing structure here going up to the rear shock tower. Very nice feature, especially if you start to do any kind of wheelies in this thing, if that's possible. Uh, this thing is pretty cool, very structured, and I definitely like the feature of the rear diffuser. Taking a look at some of the electronics included in the infraction, the Spectrum Firma 2050 KV brushless sensorless motor. This thing is pretty huge. It comes with a huge heat sink on it, as well as a built-in fan. Just to keep everything nice and cool. Now installed on the motor is a 15 tooth pinion gear, but of course there's that optional 25 tooth that's included in the supplement pack. Controlling your steering on the infraction is the Arma ADS-15M. It's a 15 kilogram waterproof servo. It'll definitely get you started. It's not the fastest servo, but it has enough power for the infraction. Now, one of the nicest updates to the Arma lineup is the included Spectrum Firma ESC. Now, this is pretty large in comparison. It has some pretty nice features like the included fan and the huge orange anodized heat sinks included all the way around. This is a 150 amp ESC capable of up to 6S LiPo. Now it does come with their new IC5 connectors. Has two connectors built in so you can run two 2S or two 3S LiPos. And it does have this included little loop right here if you only wanna run one battery. So you do have that option if you choose to do so. Now the biggest new feature of the new infraction is of course that handbrake feature. By flipping the switch on that Spectrum remote, the third channel, you can activate a braking feature or something to kind of put your car into a drift or a slide. Now it's controlled by this Spectrum S650 servo. It's a standard size servo right there and it actually controls like kind of like a slipper clutch design just to kind of kick in a slipper clutch to the rear drivetrain. Now I haven't tested it out yet so I can't really report back how it actually works. I will be doing that here very shortly but nonetheless a very cool feature and I know for a fact that this thing will be super cool to kind of get this thing going into a slide a lot easier without putting on a lot of throttle. Now, I do believe that Arma is offering this as a full kit, including all of the linkage, the little plates, I believe the servo too. I'll try and link that down below in the video description so you can add it to an existing Arma infraction or even possibly the felony. I'll have to check on that and I'll leave all of that info down in the video description. Well guys, that is my full unbox and first look at the brand new Arma infraction version two. I can't wait to get this thing on to the street and see what it can really do. I haven't had an on road car in quite some time so I, I can't wait to see the feature of the smoking tires and of course that cool handbrake feature I think I'll be testing that out quite a bit but nonetheless if you like this video give the video a like if you haven't already done so please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you'll be alerted anytime I upload a video and finally my name is Rich thanks for watching